Hello Pisces, welcome to Lotus Heart Tarot. I'm super happy to have you here. We are doing this reading in honor of the new moon in Virgo. We're just gonna see what's happening. Um, just a reminder, even though the full moon, I mean the new moon energy has passed, it's still a good time to really manifest and really continuously visualize and, um, you know, call forth in your life what you want it to be. <laughs> Co-create with the universe intentionally, mindfully. <laughs> bring it towards you. See yourself as the magnet for the life that you wish to create. That is already yours somewhere in some place in some time. If you can envision it, if you can dream it, you can be it, you can do it, you know? Okay. Um, wow, I don't, that was like a lot more than I was expecting to say. <laughs> So, setting the tone maybe for this reading. If you are someone who has subscribed to my channel, thank you, thank you. Guys, we are hovering, we are dancing back and forth across the line of 6,500. If you haven't subscribed and you have thought about it, I'm just going to ask you to please subscribe. Um, I, I, those, those numbers, you know, they mean something and they mean something to me and they mean something to YouTube. And so I deeply appreciate those of you who are subscribe. Um, I, I appreciate all of you, but I deeply appreciate those of you who subscribe. If you are a regular commenter, if you are someone who likes, who shares my videos, thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart, thank you. If you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome. Everyone is welcome here. Um, I just want to say, keep in mind that um, these are general readings, so take what resonates and leave the rest, okay? So, wow, guys, I'm already feeling a lot of energy. Let's dive right in. <clears throat> I am still recovering. I apologize if I cough. I don't expect to cough nearly as much as I did yesterday. Um, I, I think I had COVID because I cannot taste or smell anything, which is the weirdest experience. I am... I keep envisioning that I will get it back and that I will be more grateful for it on the other side. But for someone who loves to cook and bake, man, it's rough. Okay. Um, if you have any suggestions or if you had that happen to you and you know that it's okay on the other side, a little reassurance. I would, I would really deeply appreciate that. Wow. <laughs> How funny. Okay, so you guys are getting the energy of the full moon in Gemini. The answers you need are coming. And this is such a beautiful energy. Um, you know, this is literally, I was just asking you all for reassurance. If you know people who have gotten their sense of taste and smell back after losing it, um, you know, it, it's... I would just be devastated to live the rest of my life like this. It's, it's for someone who's so sense heavy, it's so hard. And, you know, um, we have all kind of lost things or we are, are all in some state in our life where there are questions, right? And where we don't necessarily know the answers and where even if people give us their best opinion or their experience or, you know, whatever, there are no guarantees in life, right? And so to have this reassurance from the universe of, you know, hang tight, don't stress it, don't sweat it, don't don't spend your time worrying about a future time. Just trust that things are unfolding the way that they're meant to and that every answer that you seek will reveal itself to you in time. With that full moon energy, it's all about the reveal, right? Um, and then you have the new moon in Virgo, which is literally who we are honoring this reading with. And I feel um, always when the card comes out for the moon that I'm doing the moon reading for, um, it is very fortuitous. It's like the universe almost confirming to me that like, yep, this is the energy. Trust this reading. <laughs> so there you have it. Um, right off the bat, we get this beautiful energy of confirmation. It does say a time to give rather than take. And 
giving and taking are both mindsets. You know what I mean? Um, and so whenever I get this card, I consider what are the things in my life that I am taking for granted that I could instead give gratitude for. And, you know, the one thing that really makes us grateful for the most basic miraculous part of our all of our lives we all share the same most miraculous part of our life and that is our health that is the fact that we are living and breathing and participating here we are these ethereal souls tied to these very human dense material bodies through this incredible thing called breath and um we don't even have to think about it it's just there it's just happening for us and so this is just one of those moments in life where it is an opportunity for us to give thanks for the things that we take for granted on a daily basis. Our health, our well-being, our breath, the opportunity that we have to experience this world in this moment, in this body. Um, it, it may not always feel like a miracle, but it always is a miracle. Um, so anyway, just... Thought I'd share that with you. <laughs> Here we go for Pisces, please. Wow, you guys, this energy, I am obsessed with this for you. Hey, this energy, it just keeps telling you to lighten up. And it and I don't mean that in um a negative way or a sarcastic way or a this way or a that way. I mean lighten your vibration. You're coming into a period of abundance. You're coming into a period of more than enough uh, where you can laugh freely at the world. Sometimes it's hard to laugh, right? Because it, it feels um, <clears throat> disingenuous or it feels, you know, opposite the way that we feel sometimes. But there's nothing better sometimes than just kicking up. What is the movie I think is just so funny? Wedding Crashers. Oh my gosh, that movie, I cannot watch it without laughing hysterically. And um, my friends told me, they called me once, they had watched a movie together, they they live out of state. And they called and they said, oh my gosh, we watched this movie and we realized like halfway through that you are Diane Keaton in this movie. And I was like, what movie are you watching? And they were like, Father of the Bride. And I had never seen it. And I watched it with my daughter and we laughed so hard. Not because we thought I was Diane Keaton, but because we thought my husband was Steve Martin. It was so funny. Um, so find the things that bring you joy, that lighten your spirits, that, you know, raise your vibrations, that, you know, allow you to enjoy and embrace the moment you're in without fear, without concern, without worry, without those dense and heavy energies. Just allow yourself to get lost in that. I, I feel that this, this is really raising your vibration for you to align with a form of abundance in your life. You do have purpose. It says, I choose to focus on the lighter side of life. You also, with every choice that you make, you are sending a message to the universe. So when you do choose like comedy movies or you do choose, I used to have a really hard time watching comedy movies. I don't know why. I just, it was like, I like I don't want to sit and laugh. Like that's just not my purpose. Laughter yoga was also the hardest yoga for me to ever participate in. It was harder than, than much more challenging physically yogas. Um, just because I was like, what in the world? I couldn't get out of my head. And sometimes that's what we need the most is we got to get out of our head. And humor allows us to do that. It allows us to not be so serious and so hung up on everything, right? Um, and then you have purpose. I know what I am here to do. And, you know, Pisces, that is an energy of being at peace, you know, not wondering why, not wondering how, not wondering where, not wondering who, not wondering what, you know, and just saying, you know what, here's what I know. <laughs> I know my purpose. I know who I am. I know what I'm here to do. I know why I'm here, you know, um, sometimes that is enough. Sometimes that's just the first step to get us started and it takes us to all of the answers that we need to, to find. Um, and sometimes, you know, it's just answering one of those questions that gives us the answer for all the rest. Um, 
So laugh. I'm getting like, laugh at yourself, laugh at life, laugh at everything. Wow. Okay. So now you have past lives and it says, release your past life karma. You are an old soul with deep wisdom. Healing your past lives will raise your vibration. See, all this energy feels to me about raising your vibration. And, you know, having the highest vibration possible is, you know, always ultimate, the, the ideal thing, right? We should, we, well, I don't want to ever say should, but we, we can always be striving in that direction, right? But at this particular time with this green in this card and this green in this card and the feeling of giving gratitude, what often happens when we are focused on gratitude is more things to be grateful for come in. And this card particularly is really giving me this feeling of um, abundance. You can see in this card, and you know, I, I feel like I get off track a lot, but there's this Buddha, right? And the Buddha has one hand up and then he has one hand along his side curving around that that abundant belly. That, that big belly is a sign of abundance, right? And you know, it, there is this alchemy um, in the magician card in Rider Waite, he has a very similar hand position, right? Or arm position. And in that, it's saying he is the conduit of change. He is the conduit of bringing something down from the ethers into real life, into co-creating with the universe, that life that you really want to live, that manifestation. It's also the ability to transmute anything into anything else. So even when life hands you something serious or something you know, when life hands you lemons, make lemonade. <laughs> Not to be cliche, but kind of, right? It's like, even when things are un difficult, you know, look up to the sky and laugh. Laugh at life. Laugh in the face of it. Why do we, being serious and being, getting upset and getting worried, what does it help? Maybe humor, maybe levity will help some of these situations. Um, I don't know. So it says um, on the bottom of the deck, innocence, take time to play. Oh my God. In, nurture your inner child. Live with a childlike sense of wonder. I mean, Pisces, your messages are everywhere. This theme came up months ago and it's coming up again. And I really like it for you. Um, a Pisces having fun, you know, it, it is a good energy. We always have the opportunity to be serious, but when we can embrace laughter and we can embrace light and we can embrace love, I, I feel like um, it's healthier. All right. Or it's like more balanced anyway. Oh, sorry, you guys. That was Steve Martin. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, okay. Okay. Now I think I'm funny. We're all in trouble. All right, here we go. Um, for Pisces, please, Spirit. Nine cards for Pisces. We're doing a nine card spread today, Pisces. Newman and Virgo, nine card spread for Pisces. <clears throat> okay. See, the Six of Pentacles is, is just even further confirmation for me. Oh, my God. The Empress really... And the full card. Oh, Pisces. Oh, okay. Oh, my God. Look at this. Um, do you see that there's almost a similarity in gesture and energy and movement of this to that Buddha, to the ma magician? It's a different angle, right? But And it's not quite as straight up and down. Um, but it's a page and it's like he's almost looking to the heavens and saying, you know what I've asked for? I've raised my cup to you. I've thanked you. I've been grateful. You know, um, I'm I'm ready. Bring it here now, you know. Um, <clears throat> but you have the full card, the six of pentacles, the empress. I love these cards. They're so beautiful. Oh my gosh. Wow. Wow. On the bottom of the deck, just so you know, is the world card. Oh my gosh. 
Oh my gosh. Okay. Wow, Pisces, these cards have actually been coming out for you a lot in your readings. The Two of Pentacles, the Five of Cups, and the Five of Pentacles. Um, here's what I want to say about this. Um, I feel like... I feel really, if when I'm just looking at the general overview of this reading, you're being asked to release a past way of being. You have already changed. You don't need to carry the past with you. Um, you, you have kind of taken from it what it had to offer and now it is just sort of a remnant, a scrap, a memory, a, I don't want to say it. it's like one of the many experiences that you will have in your life, you know, um, it's not an indication of where you're going and the important thing to remember about our past is that, you know, once we have lived through it and we have experienced it, we have gotten the fruitful energy from it. And if we decide to continue to carry it, then it will inform every decision that we make. And in that way, it will continue to affect our present and our future. And that is, you know, there are people who believe that the life is sort of set in stone. I was born into this family. I had this experience as a kid. I was traumatized. There's nothing I can do about it. You know, I'm always going to be this traumatized, broken person. And I cannot heal. I, I you know... I've tried this, I've tried that, I, you know, this is just my lot in life. This is just what I'm destined to be and to repeat. Um, they think that the circumstances of their life are sort of in stone, right? They're not really changeable. And then there are those people who think, okay, I had that experience and this is how I learned from it. This is how I grew from it. I can see why that was maybe a pivotal or important part of my life. I do not maybe regret it, you know, maybe I have regrets around it, but I, I learned a lot from it and I wouldn't trade it for the world because I am who I am because of it and I wouldn't want to be anyone else and I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. And <clears throat> I think this reading is really calling you to be that second kind of person, that person who understands that, you know, we have that fundamental choice, right? That choice between love and fear. And <clears throat> fear tells us that <clears throat> oh, what, what in the world doesn't fear tell us? Fear basically tells us, stay small, don't take any risks, don't take any chances, always look for what could go wrong in a situation to protect yourself because if something can go wrong, it probably will. And, um, you know, it, it, and so all of our decisions are, well, I'm going to play it safe. And when you live your life like that, <coughs> You typically end up alone. You typically end up unharmed, but someone who hasn't really experienced as much as maybe they could have. Someone who their breadth of knowledge is through trying to understand other people's experiences, you take the risk and I'll sit here and judge you. I'll sit in the arena while you're down there, you know, on the field actually playing and I'll judge the type of job that you're doing and I'll learn from you doing it. Well, we don't learn anything the way that we learn it 
from our own experience. And I'm not telling you to go out there and, you know, take risks with your life or whatever. You know, as I started this entire reading, the fact that you are alive and breathing in here is a miracle. And I don't think miracles are anything we should take for granted, right? There's something that we should rejoice gratitude. I don't even like to say should. So there's something that I personally, rejo you know, rejoice in gratitude for as much as I can make myself mindfully remember to do that. <laughs> you know, um, when we choose a life of love, we say, well, you know what, I'm going to take a shot and at least I'm going to go down trying. And you know, do you get hurt when you take a shot like that? Absolutely. Sometimes you will, you know, um, but is it an experience? Yes. And what are we here to do if not experience things, right? Um, you know, I think you, you, that's where discernment is such a valuable tool. And that comes through sometimes a lot of suffering. You know, it's the Queen of Swords card that we associate with the word discernment. And she has been through the entire sword cycle. She has put her heart on the line and had people break it. She has, you know, um, tried to have friendships and been deceived and had people be, you know, um, oh, have their own agenda. She has been deceived. She has been backstabbed. She has gone through very, very, very difficult cycles. Whether you're a man or a woman, we all have that energy of the Queen of Swords. We can all relate to that. And a lot, you know, she's a queen. And so how, how did this happen? She received these blows, you know? But, you know, I always relate this to the Queen of Swords. My grandma used to say the same water that softens the potato hardens the egg. And it is so true. Like, which one do you choose to be? You know, do you choose to let it soften you and, and allow you to keep choosing love? And, you know, despite it all, you heal, you, you find your way through, you find your way to the place where you can say, okay, maybe this is why this happened. Okay. Maybe, you know, this was in my highest and best to experience this. Okay. Maybe my soul even chose this before I came here. Okay. You know, maybe this, maybe that, I mean, you know, we're all on a personal path and a personal journey and every single one of our perspectives is valid. And I don't want to tell anyone how to look at their own suffering or how to cope with their own suffering. I found a way that works for me. And, you know, that's all I can offer you is that insight that I have of what works for me. But I fully understand that, that, that we're all different. And that there isn't one answer. There's not one recipe for life, one way that works for everyone, right? Um, so with this two of pentacles, it is a reminder that the choice is always in our hands. And that, you know, the choice, every, every choice that we make within it contains how we really feel. Are we choosing love or are we choosing fear? And if your life gets to a place where you're like, this is not what I wanted. This is not where I was headed. This is not what I was looking for. Ask yourself, was I choosing love or was I choosing fear? And then ask yourself again, where does that come from? Because if you want to change something, you got to get to the root of it and you got to look at it and you got to sit with it and you got to come to a place of peace with it. And then you can change it. Then you can make a different decision. Um, a lot of times in life, we're making decisions in an all off balance position. You know, it's not like everything in our life is calm and perfect. And we're just feeling solid and stable. And then something happens. And we have the opportunity to sit and think about it as long as we need to, to come to a conclusion that we feel really good about. No, our decisions are often made on the fly, back footed, like, holy hell, I can't believe this also happened this week, you know? <laughs> and so it is important to get to that root because, you know, 
really, when we're on the fly and we're making a decision and we're doing the best we can, they're really so severely a reflection of where we're coming from, how healed we are, how broken we are, how we feel about ourselves, how we feel about our life, um, you know, how we feel about life itself, all of those things. So it's important to, you know, take the steps, the effort, put in the effort to to try to create as much of a stable and solid base as we can for ourselves and to try to heal when we don't feel broken. Um, I, I heard a long time ago, and I have no idea where I heard this from, but it was parenting advice that I took very seriously. And it said, you know, if you want to have a serious emotional conversation with your kids, you don't have it in the heat of the moment. You know, you, you wait until things are good and then you take them out on a special trip or you sit down with them for a special you know where it's like your child knows that they have your full attention undivided for an amount of time and you ask them like how are you doing and, you know and you ask them questions like well what do you think about this well what do you think about that and you open up a safe space for them to tell you anything and I always did that with my kids. I had, um, you know, like my daughter did chorus on Wednesdays. So my son and I would always go to this McDonald's and sit and hang out and wait for her practice to be over with. And then he had um, a baseball private coach on Thursdays and I would go out with her, like basically to McDonald's or wherever, you know, with her, it was more like Starbucks and hang out and talk. And so I tried to do it as regularly as possible. And sometimes you can't, sometimes you can't afford it. Sometimes you don't feel good. Sometimes you got other things going on. Sometimes, you know, you just, my daughter remembers like when she was really little, I used to put on HGTV. I think it's great background noise and I, and sometimes you can get really sucked into it. And we would do eye masks or face masks and watch that and talk. Um, and you know, but my kids like call me and talk to me still to this day. And I'm so grateful because I wouldn't have done that if someone hadn't mentioned it. Cause that's certainly not how I grew up, you know? Um, and you know, a, a, a lot of things have been, you know, saying, I don't want to choose fear anymore. I don't want to be afraid. I'm going to be my parents. I don't want to be afraid that, um, you know, my, uh, I don't know what, I don't want to live in a place where I'm afraid of everything. I want to live in a place where, you know, I am loving and I'm creating loving spaces and I'm creating loving environments and I'm creating loving relationships. And when I'm with someone, they know that I'm really with them and they have my undivided attention. And, um, I think that that is a really critical step. You know, my mom, if I talked to her, she'd be like also washing the floor, also doing the dishes, also, you know, do, like doing 80 million things. And she would be super irritated and annoyed and be like, I can't really focus on what you're saying. She would literally say that. And, you know, so it just the messaging was always like, don't come to me and don't share to me because all you're doing is stressing me out. And so as a kid, you know, you have to navigate those spaces by yourself. And that is, you know, we're all living busy lives and we're all we all have that kind of energy where it's like one more thing feels like such a burden. But if we mindfully and consciously say, I want to live a beautiful life and I want to live a life of love and I want to live like this and you make that fundamental choice first and that's your priority. And then when you're in the, the somebody asks you, hey, can you make baked goods for this bake sale or whatever? You're like, no, I actually, I'm sorry, I can't, you know, because you know you can't take that on and still be a good parent. Um, yeah, I mean, I could go on and on about this, but it's prioritizing and it is what are your priorities? That's the other question the Two of Pentacles asks us. And it is kind of a foundation for a lot of the burdens that are showing up in your reading and the cycle that you're closing. And so it looks to me, Pisces, like you're closing out a cycle where you may have chosen fear or your decisions may have been informed by fear at times. Um, and when we make decisions out of fear, it usually does create barriers and it usually does create you know, blockages or limitations around us, which the 
Ten of, of Wands can be. It's kind of that brick wall that we can sort of run into where it's like there's no give in that. There's no, we can't go beyond it. We can't go past it. We have to deal with these burdens or these burdens have become so much. It's like my mom, I, I can't listen to you. I can't take on one more thing. My hands are full. And so it doesn't allow us to open up for new ideas, new adventures, a new way of being. Um, even listening to our gut instinct, even following um, that intuition and where it's leading us and where it's guiding us to, we you have to be free of burdens in order to embrace that energy. And so, you know, it seems like there were choices that were made in the past that may have been made out of a place of fear or out of a place of um, kind of like being off balance or maybe not consciously or mindfully choosing our priorities and just sort of letting life happen and just sort of responding and reacting to it and then it getting too much for us and feeling overwhelmed by it. And then, you know, sort of like having to having no choice but to sort of shut down or admit we've reached our limitation um and then you have this five of cups here with this page of wands and <clears throat> this is um a really interesting combination because it is um <sighs> in order to focus on what we desire we cannot be focused on our past and the things that didn't work out. You know, um, they say like the reason your rear view mirror is so small is because, you know, you just need to glance up at it sometimes. You're not going that way, you know? And um, I was just talking with someone um, yesterday about Tara Brock and her reign. Um, You know, if if you need a way to sort of adjust I don't know, yourself. I don't I don't even know how to really put it into words, but when things happen and we start to react and we start to get triggered, it typically is because it is reminding us of something that happened in the past or it's recalling some kind of feeling in the past or that we had in the past. And um, and it can be a real distraction from where we're going or pursuing our desires. In fact, sometimes in the pursuit of our desire, we will experience something that sort of triggers a past experience that we haven't really made peace with and we haven't really gotten over. And with the Five of Cups, it can then, that past energy can really take over. It can kind of swerve our car out of the lane that we desire to be in and take us into a different lane and sort of get us off track and get us back in an old energy and away from this bravery that we've managed to find with the Page of Wands where we say, I, I am looking forward. I am looking toward living the life that I desire and creating a life of, you know, adventure or passion or, you know, creating the life I desire. And, um, you know, it, it's with rain, you kind of take a breath and you kind of say, okay, is this really coming from this moment right now? Or is this reminding me of something and then taking me down a path? that may not even be necessary or even relevant in this moment. And um, it gives us the opportunity to kind of mindfully bring ourselves back to focusing on what we want and then keeping it in that perspective. If we allow ourselves to go into the spiral of the past and we allow ourselves to get sucked into this does feel like that and when that happened, that happened and da 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 if we are in pursuit, let's just say we're in pursuit of love and let's say we meet someone and let's say they don't text us back, okay? This is just a really simple example, but they don't text, we text them and say, how are you? And they don't text us back all day, all night. The next day <clears throat> we wake up and there's a message and we're like, sorry, it was a crazy day. I'll tell you about it later. But 
in that time frame that it took for them to respond, we have gone to, they don't care about me anymore. They're ghosting me. This is just like that time when that one person, we were in it, I thought it was going all the way and then they just disappeared. It's also like the time when I was a child and my father was like, yeah, I'm gonna pick you up on Saturday and then didn't show up. And it's like that time where my mom was like, yeah, you know, um, we'll get you ready for prom and then didn't show up and I don't have a single picture of my prom or, you know, whatever it is. Um, you know, you go down that entire path and then you're so focused on the past and you're so wrapped up in this energy and this energy has really like overtaken this energy of I'm pursuing what I desire and I'm brave and I'm strong and I'm making this choice to go for it. I'm making this choice to give it my best effort and all of a sudden we're feeling small and all of a sudden we're feeling like, oh my gosh, I need a cocoon. I need to get my energy back. I need to um, like, this is not okay. I'm taking a bigger risk here than I realized. This is making me feel overwhelmed. You know, whatever it is, right? Um, it, it takes us off our path and it distracts us. And so the only thing that we can do with our past is really come to a place of peace and acceptance with it. We can't change it. We can't change what we did. We can't change what we said. We can't change the choice we make. We can't change the position we were in. We can't change a thing about it. So reliving it, reviewing it, relooking at it, all it does is stir those emotions back up and give all of that more power in our life. When we can say, you know what, I did the best I could with where I was at, or, you know, that wasn't me, that was a projection of someone else's insecurity onto me, or, you know, my, my, my dad didn't have a good role model himself. He didn't know how to love me because he never felt loved. Um, you know, whatever it is, like wh wherever you end up following that path to the place of peace and acceptance, but you can't do that if you don't sit with it. You can't do that if you only go in to feel the heavy feelings and you don't work through what happened and who it belongs to whose burden it really is you end up carrying the burdens of other people that don't it doesn't even belong to you it was never even yours and you can't you can't come to a place of peace with it within yourself because you don't even know where it really came from you know how you got a hold of it but it's like a freaking hot potato you know it's like someone just passed it off onto you and you took it without realizing it and then we have this five of coins with the seeker card. And this is like my favorite combination of this whole um, spread here. The, the five of coins is that scarcity mindset. It, it wraps up and it sums up for me those fears that we all have. You know, it's impossible to say, okay, you know, I'm human and I have no fears. We are mortal. You know, it, in order to have no fear, I think we would all have to be immortal right um but but the fact that our life is fragile and precious and isn't guaranteed and is it, it makes us vulnerable and you know the fact that we can experience pain we can experience suffering um it makes us vulnerable but without that vulnerability we can't experience things like true love and true joy and the true bliss of that world card energy that we saw in the bottom of the deck which is that feeling of being connected to everything and, um, and, and connected in a way of shared experience. Um, and so with this combination, with the five of pentacles, it's, it does represent the mindset of those fears. We all fall on the spectrum. We're all, nobody wants to be abandoned. We're all afraid of abandonment somewhere but it's to what degree and to what degree answers the question of how much power it has over you and um and that really does inform that fear aspect of your decision making process right because if you're so afraid of abandonment that you'll do anything to avoid it then you will sacrifice your soul to stay in a relationship with someone who doesn't deserve you who isn't showing up for you and isn't reciprocating and is you know using and abusing you you're better off alone than in a situation like that but you can't see it when your fear of abandonment is bigger than it right 
So with the seeker, it says, I acknowledge that I have this fear. We can all acknowledge that. We all have those fears, a fear of intimacy, a fear of, of, of abandonment. We all have those to some degree. But the seeker says, I will not let that determine. I, I will seek. I will find the answer. I will find the antidote. I will find my way out of it. So that I can experience something different. And when you see at the top of that, that column, you have the empress. <laughs> you know, it isn't in not having a fear of abandonment. It isn't in not having a fear of intimacy. It isn't in not having those things that you become the empress. It is in understanding that that is something that ties us all together to some degree one degree or another we all have this you're not alone you're not the only one it isn't your fatal flaw it isn't something that is guaranteed to prevent you from experiencing abundance it is something that we have to look at and when we lean into our fears instead of shying away from them and running away from them we understand the shadow aspect of them we understand um isn't that just such a powerful card you guys um we we shine a light on them and we look at them and we say okay i know you're there i know you have needs i know that you know you're valid. I know that you come from this place, this time. And, you know, there are all different kinds of methods. You can sit with your own inner child. You can do meditations where you go back and you love your inner child and you be for your inner child. What your inner child needed in the moment when this fear was gaining its power over you. Um, but it doesn't even take that, you know, you can, like I said, there's no one answer. There's no, um, there's no one way that the river is going to make it to the ocean, no matter what, it's just what path are you taking? And you know how they say it's the journey, not the destination. We all think it's about the ocean, but it's about the way we carve our way there. Um, you know, you see that a lot when people make their long-term goals a reality. They go into like this depression. They no longer have a sense of direction. They don't know what they're doing anymore. And their whole life was so focused on meeting that goal, reaching that end point, um, that, that, that they, the journey is over. And now they realize, oh my God, it was about the journey. And the journey was the best part. And I just rushed through that or I just you know, didn't appreciate it. I just bolted my way, you know, I just did it, you know, um, without realizing the richness and the beauty that was there in the seeking, in the curiousness, in the getting to know yourself, in the, you know, understanding, even the hard parts, even the parts that scare us. It has no power over you if you're willing to look at it. You know, it's like if you're afraid of the dark, and you're laying there and you're like, oh man, I'm terrified. I can't see. I don't know. There could be a boogeyman in here. There could be somebody under my bed. There could be somebody in my closet. There could be somebody out of the window. <coughs> I shouldn't have watched all those horror movies <coughs> or read all those Stephen King books. Um, because right now I'm terrified. Well, what happens when you turn on the light and you open the closet door and you look under the bed and you look outside and there's nothing there? You're not afraid anymore. I don't know. I don't want to get like too off topic, but that's what life is all about. It is about the journey. It is about the seeking. And it is about the willingness to look at the parts of ourselves that um, feel like a vulnerability or a failure or a problem or a shadow or, you know, it, it's, it's about our willingness to acknowledge that we're human and that we are perfectly imperfect and that we all possess this. And that when we're dealing with another person and we're trying to develop a, an intimate relationship with them, they too are dealing with this. Um, 
But we always have the ability to take our power back. We always have the ability to say, you know what? I'm choosing love over fear. I may not have a role model for it. I may not know what it looks like. I may not know what it is. I may not, you know, just readily be able to tap into that energy. But you know what? I'm going to find the answer. I'm going to accept that maybe other people have valid ideas. And when something resonates with me, I'm going to commit and discipline myself to doing it, to living it and to being it. And when you do that, things begin to change. And when you do that, it, it does really, it is the beginning of a really important journey. And when you look at these cards that you have on the top, you look at the full card, the Six of Pentacles, and the Empress. And the full card is the bravery to leave the past behind and to let go of these burdens that have come from decisions that we made when we didn't know better or decisions that other people made that were thrust upon us that we had no say in, that we had no choice in. And we understand the value of releasing them because it allows us to listen to our gut instinct and to follow our soul path and our soul purpose and to be at zero, you know, to be empty and to be free and to have no attachment and to, you know, be free to pursue the path that we are meant to pursue and that we are feeling guided and driven to pursue. Here with the Five of Cups and the Page of Wands and the Six of Pentacles, there is almost this sense of, you know, if you build it, they will come <laughs> or whatever. I don't know. What is that from? I can't even think, but I just heard that. Um, what is this? Like, if I choose to pursue my passion and I am committed to it, and every time something comes up that feels uncomfortable or reminds me of something from my past or seeks to distract me or pull me away from where I'm going and, and suck me into the rear view mirror of it all. I'm going to ask myself, which energy I feel more at peace with. Um, and it's not even just that, you know, with the Six of Pentacles, there's this energy of well, it's a six. So it is an energy about harmony and about unity. And in order to really keep the rear view mirror, the rear view mirror, and to not get distracted and sucked into it. We'll never fully be free of the rearview mirror, but we can come to a place of peace with it. You know, I, I've used the analogy of learning how to drive a car, right? Where, you know, well, here's what I want to say. It's something that we check when we're driving. You know, we look up to make sure, okay, if I'm going to pass somebody in the next 10 minutes, I see that. Uh, I, I know where basically everyone is around me. I'm, I'm feeling safe because I, everything is in its place. The rearview mirror is there. I'm not resisting it. I'm not ripping it off the windshield. I'm not getting rid of it. Um, but I'm not giving into it. I'm not focusing in on it. And I'm not heading in that direction. I'm not using it to drive my car. We only use it for a temporary moment to back up, you know. And that's what it's meant for. Like, okay, I need to know the origin story of why I'm feeling this way. Or, I, you know, okay, I can look in the rearview mirror. I don't want to get stuck there. I don't want to unpack and stay there. I'm just glancing at it. I'm just using it to navigate this short stretch. And then my focus is going right back on the front, out the windshield. And there is a balance and there is a peace and there is an acceptance that, okay, you know what? There's nothing I can do about my past. I can't go back. I can't make a different decision. Reliving it is not helping me. It's sucking me in a direction that I'm not headed in. And <clears throat> so I'm going to keep it in its place. 
I'm not going to live my life in regret and I'm not going to live my life like, well, I made that decision back there. So now, you know, that's my lot in life. I can't change it. I can't do anything about it. Or I was born into this family or born into this situation or whatever. And that's my lot in life. No, I'm going to keep focused forward. I'm going to keep focused on what I desire and I'm going to be at a place of peace with my past. And with the Six of Pentacles, there is this trust that if I do that, I will receive opportunities. I will, th there's an imbalance in the Five of Cups. There is something that is unjust or unfair or unbalanced. And with this Six of Pentacles, life is never going to be fair. Life is never going to be equal, you know. But you personally, as a person have the opportunity to experience wins and losses, both. And to take the good from both. And to transform in your highest and best way. And that's sort of what this is saying. I trust that the universe will always balance the bad with the good. I will trust that if what I'm putting out there is something, you know, positive, it may not come back to me from that source, but it will come back to me. You know, there's something very karmic about the Six of Pentacles. Something very like an eye for an eye, you know, except not. Because that's not even the way karma works. But it's, you know, if I'm putting out love and I'm putting out positive energy and my goal and my intention is to make my little spot in the world the most beautiful, loving place that I can make it and that I'm going to be that vibration and I'm going to try to mindfully be aware of living my life in that way, then what is around me will transform. And it does. It 100% does. I can tell you from my own life experience that it does. It, it doesn't mean you're going to go out and win the lottery. It doesn't mean that you're going to whatever. But where you put your focus and where you put your energy, it will flow and it will grow and it will expand. And you just have to keep having faith. It doesn't happen right away. It, it sometimes takes time. And sometimes it takes, you know, getting a few doors shut in your face because that wasn't meant for you till you find that one that is meant for you. Um, but you got to keep focused. You got to keep focused on what you desire, not on what has already gone wrong. Um, and trust and just have faith. And then you have that seeker five of pentacles energy with the empress sitting on top of it, which is saying, if I'm not afraid of myself and I'm not afraid of my fears you know I don't let my fears get the best of me or control me and I'm willing to lean into them to find the answers and to heal them to sit with them to allow them to be and to see what I can learn from them to be curious about them to investigate them that's the eye for Marine <coughs> then I will have the power in my life they will not have the power over me. I will have the power in my life. And I will be the co-creator of the life of my dreams, of what I want to imagine. And when you look at the card on the bottom of the deck, and the fact that it is the Eight of Pentacles, it that's the card of self-mastery. That's the card of day in and day out. I put the work in day in and day out. I stay disciplined day in and day out. I tend to that crop that I planted, those seeds that I planted, and this is what it grows. This is, it grows abundance. It builds on itself and it provides stability and it provides comfort and it provides a sense of safety. And you know, too, I'm also getting from this card, it, it there is, um, where I see the result of my behavior, or I see the result of the action that I'm putting out there. All right, let me um, just get any messages on love from the new moon in Virgo. 
Virgo is about, you know, it, it, it's like daily habits, routines, things like that. It is discipline. It is kind of, um, you know, um, detail oriented sort of energy. It's the energy of the hermit. It's us with us. And so, of course, I guess I didn't think about it. But yeah, this reading is about us, you know. Let me see how this relates to love. Well, if you are in this energy and you go through this cycle and you come to these conclusions and you do this path, you you'll be ready. You know, you'll you'll be someone who can. Wow. Uh, I think Venus might also be in Libra right now. Oh my gosh, you guys! This moon I feel like is really powerful for you. Wow. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> okay, I just want to make sure nobody else fell on the floor. All right. So you have the devil on the bottom of the deck. And this is talking about fear and illusion. And... <laughs> You know, the new moon, I just keep getting this afraid of the dark energy or like that analogy of, you know, w when we don't look at something, it grows. It grows in lure. It grows in illusion. Um, it grows because it starts to feel bigger than us. You know, when you think about that boogeyman that could be hiding under your bed and you're scared to death to put your feet on the floor, to run over and turn on the lights, um, to see, to look, to see if there is a boogeyman under your bed. Um, when you're laying there, you just keep getting more and more scared, right? You don't, you, 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 it's like, Sometimes we need the reassurance of turning on the lights and looking. And when we look, our fear shrinks. When we look, we laugh at ourselves. We, we turn our head up to the sky like that Buddha in that card and we go, oh my gosh, I'm so silly. You know what I mean? Um, but while the lights are out in the new moon, you know, the lights are out during the new moon, um, it's, it's easy to lose that perspective or it's easy to sort of, um, you know, not... Hmm. Not, um, you know, not find that relief or that reassurance that we're looking for. It's interesting here because whew, um, the new moon is a time of manifesting. It's a time of visualizing. It's a time of that kind of like that page of wands, right? Of, okay, I'm focused on what I desire. I'm focused out the windshield. I'm not looking at the past. You know, if, if we, if, if in our quiet time, in our downtime, in our in our time where we where we aren't quite sure what's next or we aren't quite sure what's coming for us, we start reflecting on the past and the things that have gone wrong, then we're sort of manifesting that energy. We're sort of where our focus goes, you know, energy flows. So if we if we take that as an opportunity to go, oh man, this went wrong, that went wrong you know, replay our the worst days of our lives or this conversation or that conversation, you know, and we're really focused on that, then we're calling that back into our lives. And so I just keep getting stay focused out, you know, go look toward where the light is. And if the light is in the future or the light is even in the present moment, like focusing on this is good in my life. This is good in my life. I like this about my life, man. I've started this routine and I like it, you know, like I told you, I think at the beginning of the year, one of my big goals was reading. I used to be a really avid reader. I stopped reading and, you know, I picked it up for here and there, but just really not stuck to it. And in May, there started this like big book challenge on YouTube or it's like <laughs> read all these big books and yesterday ended. And I will tell you that since Memorial Day weekend until last night, I would I had read about like ten and a half big books, over four hundred pages, and um, the sense of pride and accomplishment I felt was like pretty intense. Um, but 
the <laughs> the thing is, and I, you know, I woke up this morning reading again, which was my habit. And so I feel just like, wow, yes, and this huge sense of accomplishment. But like, it was my goal in January. And by May, I still hadn't done it. And I was like, oh, man. You know, I, I really was kind of beating myself up about it and I really was being sort of critical about it and I really didn't know why I wasn't doing it. You know, I, I wanted to do it. I bought all these books I was excited to read. My TBR shelf was like totally overstocked and full of really cool books, um, but I just didn't do it. And, um, you know, when I look back on my life, you know, I started playing the clarinet and then I stopped. I started playing the violin and then I stopped. I was a swimmer and then I stopped. I was this and then I was stopped and then I, you know, all these things. And I, I just, you know, and I think too, they say, you know, like if you have experienced trauma in your life, sometimes it is sort of hard to start new things or it is start to hard to change your routine or hard to, um, because there's, you get this like shutdown situation happening. And, um, and I think that was a bit me. I have done a lot of, I have, I have done a lot of things where I have stuck with it and I have been successful with it. But I think there is that like, you know, there's, we always have to get past something with ourselves. you know, is what I'm trying to say. And it's like, instead of saying, instead of getting all critical with myself and saying like, man, you know, why aren't you reading? Why aren't you doing this? Um, I, I had gone in May to pick up my daughter and we had an afternoon together and she was like, mom, do you want to go to Barnes and Noble and just like get a coffee and like hang out? And she was like, I'm dying to go to a bookstore. She's a very avid reader. And I was like, yeah, okay. And we went and I found this book and I wanted to read it. And it, and it just so happens it was a big book. And I was like, ah, you know, I'm not going to commit to that because I just don't read. And I've been saying since January, I'm going to read and I haven't read and I'm not going to read. And rah, rah, rah. and so I came home and I saw on YouTube this like big book challenge and it started on Memorial Day. And I think it was Memorial Day when I saw it. And I was like, oh man. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to order that book and I'm going to try. And I ordered that book and then I, then I did it and I read it and I, I was like, oh my gosh, I just read like a 700 page book. I haven't done that in forever, you know? And I was just really very excited about myself. And then it felt so good that I kept doing it. And so it's kind of one of those things where, you know, sometimes you need a little shove or sometimes the universe will even put something in your feed. I, I didn't, I don't know where that video came from. I had never seen a video by this person before or anything. Um, but sometimes you just need that little push, that little, instead of criticizing yourself, you need to say, you know what, I'm just going to do it, you know, or you know what, like, screw it. You know, I've been saying this, I've been wanting to do this, you know, what is really keeping me from it? And really asking ourselves, what is keeping me from it? You know, I, when I asked myself, I got that answer of, well, you started this and you quit that and you did it. And it sounded like my mother, to be honest with you. Um, she used to say that she kept track of everything I ever quit, ballet, swimming, violin, clarinet, <laughs> um, and, and like would bring it up whenever I quit anything. And so I think I, you know, before I make a commitment to start something, I feel like, oh, I'm going to have to finish it. Not everything is meant to be finished. Like we're not supposed to make our decision at three to do ballet and think that at 11, we're going to be this, that we're going to have the same desire. Like, no, you know what I mean? And I had to go through that whole thing and I had to come to peace with that whole thing, but it was good. If I hadn't, if I had just been like, okay, I accept that I'm just never going to read again, or that's just not who I am anymore or whatever. Um, I wouldn't have done it. And like, honestly, it's been one of the best things I've done this year. And, um, and so I'm happy that I did it. Um, but the thing is, it's like, <clears throat> with that devil energy, it's like there are these things that keep us stuck and sometimes we understand them and sometimes they're obvious and sometimes they're not. I honestly had no idea why I wasn't doing it. I had no reason not to do it in my mind. And so immediately I started criticizing myself and that's what we do. And instead of like taking that approach of being hard on ourselves, we if we embrace ourselves and we say, okay, 
well, what's going on? If you really know you want to read, then why aren't you doing it? Like, is it a lack of time? Is it a lack of, you know, what is it, you know? Um, and when you get down to it and you, you realize, man, I've been really critical. I've been really hard on myself. I sound like my mother to myself and, you know, all that. And you kind of work through it and you realize how silly it is. You turn on the lights on the thing. Um, and look what it frees you up to do. And so I try to remember that, but you know, I do get stuck too. And, um, and that's that devil energy. It's kind of like looking at our daily life and the things that we have said to ourselves, man, I really want to change this, or I really want to add this, or I really want to try this. And we just haven't done it. Well, let's turn on the lights on that. Why aren't we doing it? Why, why are we, um, why are we not, not going after what we desire. And that's when it's okay to look in the rear view mirror because there could be an answer there, you know? But we have this Two of Wands, Ace of Cups energy. And th this is like choosing love in a very empowered way. And it's choosing self-love, but it's also choosing those opportunities for love that the universe puts in front of you. The Aces are potential. There are opportunities that the universe is giving you to experience even possibly new love um, or the return of an old love in a different energy like it has been for me with reading. Um, and <clears throat> with the Two of Wands, that's a much more empowered choice point than the Two of Pentacles that we were sitting on before. And this is like, you know, I this is, I with this decision, I am creating energy. With this decision, I am not only creating space for something in my life, but I'm also telling the universe that this is what I am willing to accept. This is what I want. This is what I'm willing to do for what I desire. And I'm letting the universe respond to me. And, <clears throat> you know, with the moon card, there's always an energy of the subconscious. There's always an energy of the intuition. And... In this case, I feel like it's both because there is this energy of our intuition is guiding us in this direction for a reason. I woke up on January 1st and was like, gosh, I really want to read this year. I want this year to be about reading for me for a reason. And it, I was intuitively led in that direction. So why is that? If I'm on a day in and day out basis saying, gosh, I would like to change this about my life, or I would like to add this to my routine, or I would like to be more like this, or I would like to choose love more of the time, or I would like this, or I would like that, or I would like love, more love in my life, or I would like more things to be grateful for in my life, or da 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 but then I'm not doing anything about it, then, you know, that's where, okay, maybe I'm not doing something about it is hidden in those shadows, in the subconscious of my choices, which takes me back to that two of pentacles energy we started the reading with of, am I choosing love or am I choosing fear? And if I'm determined to be someone who always chooses love and who says yes to the opportunities of the universe and is a space in a space to automatically say yes without fear to the universe and the opportunities that the universe is providing, I have to be willing to turn on the lights on this. I have to be willing to look at the decisions that I've made out of fear and ask myself why. You have the Knight of Wands with the Ten of Pentacles. And this is, you know, in the pursuit of your passion. When you put day in and day out effort, when you make day in and day out investment, when you continuously put energy toward it, it manifests into something. It Well, it builds in strength and in energy and it turns into something that you can rely on. You know, the Knight of Wands can only take you so far, right? We know that in love, when we're experiencing love with another person, we know that that Knight of Wands energy may be that spark of attraction, may be that thing that gets someone to move from a seat of safety into, you know what, I'm gonna pursue that person. I'm going to go after what I desire and I see something I desire right there. But it requires the day in and day out effort to take this energy and to make it matter and to make it count and to make it add up. You have the King of Swords with the Queen of Pentacles. I swear I saw the King of Wands somewhere. I 
I swear I saw the King of Pentacles somewhere. That is so, I mean, the King of Wands. Oh, it was the Knight of Wands. I do that sometimes. Okay. Um, so anyway, we have the King of Swords and the Queen of Pentacles. And this energy is telling me that, you know, how I was talking to you guys about that um, energy of the Queen of Swords being the energy of discernment. Well, when we get to the King of Swords energy, this is mastery of our thoughts. This is mastery of our words and our thoughts. And with the Queen of Pentacles coming behind this, it is saying to me that I am thinking from a place that shows that I value myself. A, a place where I it shows that I know my own worthiness. And when I speak, it automatically shows, it automatically comes out that like I am someone who values myself, who values my time, who values my investment. And if I'm going to do this, if I'm going to invest in something, if I say I'm going to invest in something, I'm investing in it. If I say I'm going to do something or if I think I should do something, I'm going to put the effort, the discipline, and the energy behind it to actually do it and to show up for it. And when I look at this in terms of love, in terms of you and someone else, I see that I think you're getting an opportunity, and this has been coming out a lot in readings, to have an opportunity, a new opportunity in love. And that, you know, sometimes the only thing that stands between us and what we truly desire is our fear, is the unknown, is, you know, and this can be a fear of intimacy. This can be a fear of having deep feelings for someone being that kind of vulnerable to someone. Um, but it is also the divine feminine energy, which is being able to receive unconditional love, you know, being able to receive what is maybe sometimes easier for you to give. With the Knight of Wands and the Ten of Pentacles, it says to me, it's going to take more than desire for you to win a space at my table. You can come to me, you can flirt with me, you can tell me how attractive I am, you can you know, say all the pretty things and all of this and all of that and even make me feel, I can even feel a spark of chemistry towards you. But what it's going to require for you to get past this energy, to get to this energy, is day in and day out work and effort. And if you don't show me this, then I don't let you in. Because this is the price to do, to, to have access to the Queen of Pentacles, to my nurturing self. I save that for myself unless I have a very good reason to offer it to someone else. Um, so I, I see an opportunity coming up and I see there is a heavy focus on you not letting your own fear or illusions get the best of you. Turn the lights on. Why am I feeling this way? What is happening? And not after the fact, but when you begin to feel it, when you begin to feel shakily, start to take an inventory of what's going on. With the um, Knight of Wands and the Ten of Pentacles and the King of Swords and the Queen of Pentacles is very clear that if you are someone who has been dealing with people who are generally in and out or someone who has been in and out and they're trying to get a new opportunity with you, it, it is like no matter what, you do not get this, you do not get access to this without proving your way in, period. There's a butterfly on this wand. This person will know that you have changed. We're not falling into old traps or patterns anymore. If you're dealing with a water sign, I hide my feelings. I don't know how to feel. I want to make amends. And this relationship is moving towards a sacred union. If you are dealing with a fire sign, geez Louise. I feel kind of a frantic energy around this. Um, you have, I daydream about a life with you. I am in a committed relationship. Uh, I don't know about that. I don't trust that. Um, I wish we could go back. Warning, don't dismiss the red flags here. Um, I don't know why this happened. It's time for me to heal now. I knew exactly what I was doing. I feel you even though we are apart. I feel this is someone who has a fear of commitment or connection or something. Like, they gotta face their own fears here. <laughs> okay. 
If you're dealing with an earth sign, you have, it's safe to make the move you're considering. I would do it all again. I don't, I know you don't feel the same. The attraction you feel is mutual. I want to be more than friends. I'm becoming a better person. And I feel so drawn to you. If you are dealing with an air sign, Pisces, I am not financially stable. Um, this person is unable to give you all you deserve and I can't get enough of you and I am recovering. All right, guys. Wow. New moon in Virgo. <laughs> Turn on the lights. <laughs> all right. Here we go, guys. Um, I hope this reading helped. I hope this brought you some peace and some clarity. Um, and gosh, guys, I really love you and I hope it helped. And if it did, let me know, like, share, subscribe, comment. And, um, again, if you've thought about subscribing, please do. I'm teetering on that 6,500 and me and I'd really like to successfully be over that hurdle. Until next time, guys, I send you off with all my very best. Always, always. Bye-bye.